when Alicia was around six weeks of age, she went into cardiac arrest. And uh, that meant that we were then involved with a whole lot of special, to special care. Uh, we discovered she had epilepsy. There was significant developmental delay. We found there was uh, some speech impediments. There was a hearing, hearing deficit. Uh, and also some issues with her fine and gross motor skills. So we went along and had some genetic testing and that's when we discovered that she had a deletion on the 18th chromosome. Chromosome 18 is a rare condition. It's got a, quite a, a vast spectrum uh, in the way that it affects the individual. So we have children who can remain undiagnosed until they're in their mid-twenties. And then we have little ones who um, are unable to thrive and we lose them within a few days. Alicia was around two and a half years of age when she had uh, the genetic testing done. The first few years of Alicia's life were felt pretty desolate. Uh, she was a very sick little baby who needed a lot of care and I really felt like someone had come and taken my life away from me and pretty well that was the end of it for my dreams, uh, my life and it was going to be serving this little person who I loved dearly. Uh, it was only when I started to step outside our inner circle and attend conferences and go to seminars, uh, start to meet other people who'd walked the road before me that there started to be some light at the end of the tunnel. With our paediatrician in those early days, I felt like she was on our team. I felt like that she was prepared to go the distance and uncover this mystery together with me. I can't say that that experience has been right across the board over Alicia's 20 years. Uh, there's certainly been different levels of engagement with people uh, in various, you know, the medical sector, the education sector and the service sector. I think the very best people we've been able to walk alongside are the people who are excited about uncovering a mystery. And that's exactly what all of these rare conditions are. They're a wonderful mystery that give us so, so many clues to so many medical and intellectual issues. And I think it, it's so exciting when we unfold a piece of that mystery together. And I've always looked at it that we are a member of a big team. It takes many, many hands for Alicia's life to be full and vibrant. It takes many hands for her to remain healthy. And each of the specialists and the educators and the service providers that come our way become part of Team Alicia, if you like. We've created our own circle of support, which we call our circle of strength. We've got members of our chromosome in family who have become um, married people. They live happy, wonderful lives. They're supported in most, on most occasions. So it's difficult for me when she's 20, and bearing in mind that we're dealing with developmental delay, so I don't know if she's going to fall in love. I don't know if she's going to get married. Um, I've got that unknown, but I also know she'll always need support. What I want desperately is for everything to stay the same and for me to have things in place that will remain when I'm gone but that's not the reality that I deal with. My two older children, I don't know what their future holds. So as much as I know they're part of the plan, they are only part of the plan. So it's unfolding and it will change as Alicia changes. If I talk about a light bulb moment, it was meeting a wonderful woman called Anne Greer and she had two children with disability and she said to me, Veronica, you have to continue to flourish. You must flourish. And ever since I met Anne, I, I keep those words and even when I feel, you know, and it's scary at this point, I've got a young adult and I don't have a big plan for the future, but I think what I've done is Lisa and I have flourished and we enjoy our life.